So hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me out on the bank and we're in search of chub. Some weeks you hear me say on the channel about being a long week in work and by God, this week has been a long week in work. I couldn't wait for today to come along. I've been sat at my desk, really busy, but looking forward, like all us anglers do, to the weekend. As you can hear behind me, the birds are singing and we're a far cry now from that desk. And hopefully today, we can cross paths with Mr Chubb. As you can see on screen now, the river though is low and clear. I'm probably clearer than last time we were on here, so it is going to present a few challenges, but that is the magic of fishing. So before we do get into this week's blog, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that subscribes to the channel, enjoys the videos, and leaves the videos a like. If you do enjoy the channel, please subscribe down below. It'd be really appreciated, and join us every Friday on the channel for the new adventure. So as you can see, the river is just as clear as last time, if not a bit lower, and it is going to be difficult. We have got a bit of cloud cover today, which last time it was bright sunshine, so hopefully that's going to go in our favour, but... As you can see, it is low and clear, so it's not going to be easy, and hopefully we can just get one or two chub on the bank and get that bend in the rod. I can see a chub just mooching down here on the shallows, so they are about. We're going to moosey on a bit downstream and just see if we can pick a bit of a better area. You know, it's very good to be able to see them, but it's very hard to catch them in, in such shallow water so as you can see on screen now mr heron is busy downstream hunting for his breakfast and i've had a mooch on down the river from where you last saw me i've come to the deepest water i can find but still normally you can't see the bottom much here you can see a bit but you can just see how clear it's going to be it's going to be difficult most definitely i've picked an area with plenty of structure a bit of depth and plenty of tree cover that's going to keep the swim dark hopefully to give myself the best chance of a bite a little fish just top there to give myself the best chance i'm just feeding maggot already into the swim but i'm making sure i go into that moving water I don't really want the fish down here um i want to be playing them down here if we get one but by just putting some maggot into the swim just beginning to put some bait down that line and hopefully we can trick one nice and early. You never know with river fishing, we could get a load. We might not get a bite. <laughs> it's just one of them days, but hopefully we can fill one or two chub. So everything you do in these situations has got to be done a bit covertly. Even just putting your plummet in, rather than just crashing it in, just gently just dropping it in with a little plop. You see there, we've got a bit of depth. But everything is done just gentle. So we're all set up now, I've been just setting the rod up and all the time just been introducing some maggots into the swim and some hemp. I'm going to hemp a bit further down because I don't really want the chub if they're there to come up. I really want them to really stay down there a bit. So I'm feeding the hemp just a bit, a bit down the swim. So I'm just going to start off with a single maggot on the hook. Keep on putting the maggots into the swim. You know, upstream so hopefully they get down in the water. It's time for that first cast, which we've waited all week for. <laughs> I can tell you now I've waited all week for this first cast. Look that float shotted right down. There we go, it's buried the first cast. And that's what I mean about your preparation. Just feeding the swim while you're setting up is always key. We managed to fill one very first cast there. I mean, the float didn't really settle. That light shotting pattern and holding back has filled the chub straight away. So while we're playing this fish, we'll go over the setup. I'm using my Corum centre pin. I've got my glide, and that's in 12 foot. You know, there's a lot of overhanging trees, so we can get in all the little nooks and crannies. We managed to hook one on the first cast, and the key now is to getting it in. You can see there. The clear water, but it's all about not making much of a fuss while we get it in. Hopefully, there's one or two more down there. He's putting up a bit of a battle. <laughs> but I have waited all week to see them white lips come up. We managed to pick the right swim. 
and we've played it right, feeding it right to get a bite. Let's get him in and take a look. So Mr Chubb is resting in the margin down there. It's going to take us a few moments to blog him. While I'm doing that, I'm just going to keep the bait going in. That will have spooked one or two of them most definitely because it's shallow. But by putting more bait in, it's just going to give them time to regroup and hopefully settle. And we can go in and try and get another. So there we go. With conditions so low and clear, I was a bit dubious whether it'd work or not because it is really low. But the plan worked. We've got the first chub on the bank. One happy, happy Danny. This week's been quite warm and all the farmers have been making hay while the sun shines. We've got to do the opposite. We've got to make hay while the sun doesn't shine. Make the most of these overcast conditions. So we're just going to continue on that single maggot. Feed, obviously key to keeping the fish in the area. I'm just going to ease that bait through the swim, holding back just to replicate that food going through. The swim does shallow up down as we go down, so you've got to be careful. There we go. Floats buried again, right where we were putting that hemp. So I have to be honest on the channel, I was torn today between coming here or going to the venue that I very, very first stick float fished on, on the River Dee. And that would have been the target today. <laughs> so it's a bit ironic we've caught one anyway. But if you do want to see that video, Leave it in the comments down below and yeah, we'll head on to the River Dee and try and catch some of these lovely grayling. So as you've just seen there, we're surrounded by beautiful scenery. We've been catching one or two little chublets after that chub. He's just buried with Mr. Trout and he's all over the swim. <laughs> exactly what we didn't really want, but not much you can do really. You can't decide which takes the maggots. But this trout is all over the swim. <laughs> you can see there's not a bad one. He'd be definitely an eater, as my uncle would say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a nice bend in the rod, but they just don't fight the same as Mr. Chubb, did he? This has got to be one of the most beautiful trout that I've ever caught. It wouldn't stay still long for the picture, but look at all the spots on that fish. So Mr. Trout returned. The key to this type of fishing, most definitely, is food. Mr. Trout loves the maggot, but so does Mr. Chubb. And you've got to keep the bait going in. It's greed and hunger, especially as the seasons change like they are now, that are going to keep these bites coming, if we're going to keep them coming. So I'll give that swim probably a 15, 20 minute break since that trout, just to try and settle. It doesn't normally bother the small little chublets, it's the bigger chub that it normally spooks a bit. There we go. So just by resting that swim, for 15, 20 minutes after that trout, went straight back in, and the float's buried straight away with a chub. And that's the key to this game. You might have gone straight back in and got him straight away, but in my mind, you let him rest, let him come back in, feed some maggots, get him back on the feed, and most of all, get him back confident. So size of fish is always relative to the venue that you're fishing. On the likes of the River Seven or the River Y, it's probably a small chub, but for a small river like this, that has made my morning. That's a proper good chub for this river, in fine condition, and yeah, great little fight on that centre pin, 12 foot glide rod, and that light line. Prey on that greed of the chub, keep the maggots going in, and hopefully, we can keep attracting one or two more in. With the river so low elsewhere, these chub can really pack in. And as it gets colder into winter, they'll do it more and more. But with the river solo elsewhere, 
they can only really be in the dark patches and this is probably one of the deeper areas so it could hold quite a few chub we've just got to keep doing to get as many out as possible one thing that i love to see on rivers and i say it all the time on the blog is when you're getting fish of all sizes that is your three pounder of the future and it's in beautiful condition but that makes me just as happy as that chub before There we go, just nice distance down the swim over that hemp. So hemp is a bait that I get lots of questions about and there's no such thing in angling as a wonder bait but it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't like all baits but when it does it's a great bait and it works more often than not and this chub is just buried right over that hemp and it is keeping them down the swim. And it's chub number three and when I was looking at the river first thing walking down I'd have been happy with three and the key to it as always with the chub resting down there number three said it a few times is feed and you've got to keep it going in so there we go chub number three and one happy happy Danny there's plenty of fish down there and I can see them coming up shallow for the maggots so hopefully there's one or two more but like I said earlier on you've just got to make the most of it while they're in the swim it will eventually spook because it's too clear for it not to happen but while we're getting them out and we're having fun, we'll stick with it. For anyone new to river fishing, this shows the importance of colour and why I like winter so much. A few weeks time, this river will have an extra foot on it maybe, but it'll have that colour. And the three chub and the trout that we've had today become eight, ten chub maybe. But it all comes down to that colour. The fish are out there now, but because it's so clear, it's harder you get three and it's a good day so experience is a great thing and it can be a bad thing at times did say after chub number three we might struggle normally three is the limit in these conditions but we've stuck with it and just by going into that shadow over there we've managed to hook another fish and this will be a trout he's not doing much at all really he's just Sundering round, oh it's a chub, it looks like a nice one. Been well worth waiting for. See the light just coming through the trees there, which is bittersweet because it does kind of mark the end, I think, as that light comes on the water, these fish will get harder and harder to catch. And before we get him out and take a look, you can see just how many maggots he's spewed up. We've been getting away with it. But that is a beautiful chub that will give him a good rest. And we'll take a look. So I'm not really good at poetry. I leave that to my little girl Abby, who's very good at it. But that's chub number four, and it was well worth waiting for. Look at that for a lovely plump chub. A lot of effort's gone into that, probably half an hour of trotting, but well worth the effort. And perseverance in fishing and effort normally equals success. Sticking with it, the very next cast it's buried again. I think this is chub number five, which We've worked for, most definitely, we've stuck at it for that half an hour, been rewarded with two quick bites. We won't bother getting that one out for the camera because we want to try and make the most of the embers of this swim. But that, another lovely chub. You can see, been getting away with it, probably further downstream. But, come into the swim and we've picked up two in quick succession. So on the way back to the car, couldn't resist a few casts with that beautiful snag there. How could you walk past that? And one or two chublets, like you can see on screen now, and the float is buried with a chub that calls that snag home. You see that it comes up in the water. This is where the power of that 12 foot glide is there. Just tease it away and take your time. Just try and get it in. On the way back to the car, couldn't resist the cast in that snag. It's a beautiful feature. It just had to hold the chub. Didn't take too long for a few chublets to slip up. And then this chub buried the float and a lovely fight on that glide. And for those that worry why I'm always late at home, <laughs> it comes as no surprise why I'm always in trouble. Just cannot leave the bank and miss opportunities like that. Should have been home probably an hour ago. So I'm already in the doghouse. 
but I caught a couple of fish so it'll ease the blow. So what was supposed to be a quick cast on the way back to the car has resulted in probably another half an hour but two beautiful chub. It's super hard to leave when you're getting bites like this so I am going to have a couple more casts. I'm already in trouble let's face it. Let's get this beautiful bronze chevin straight back and see if we can get another. So the session does come to an end there now and I did lose one more chub in the swim before calling it a day. As you can see on screen now, we had a few chub in that first swim. The second swim, we managed two beautiful chub as well. Given the conditions this morning, more than made up with the results today. And I hope you've enjoyed this week's video. If you have, please leave it a like and subscribe down below. And all that remains for me now to say is to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. And we'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.